Hello and welcome to UF Tube. UFC is the ultimate fighting championship, a mixed martial arts fighting franchise that many Australians are really into. But this is our consumer complaint segment, FU Tube. And there were plenty of FUs from UFC fans aimed at Ticketek recently, when interim middleweight champion Robert the Reaper Whitaker withdrew on medical grounds from a UFC title bout in Perth. As you can imagine, many fans were devastated. How do I get my dollars to get refunded? No, no! Thousands of enraged cage fighting fans? That is a tricky PR situation. But if the tip-offs to the checkout are any indication, Ticketek customer service drives all sorts of people into a violent rage. I rang up customer service eight The only times, contact I've found is constantly busy and that response answered absolutely nothing. To be fair, Ticketek says it issues 23 million tickets to more than 20,000 events a year. And in the events business, sometimes things outside the control of companies like Ticketek do happen. Why? <laughs> so, if something does go wrong, what's the best way to contact Ticketek? And is anger about Ticketek customer service justified? To get a sense, we ran our own little randomised trial of Ticketek customer service. Their online reputation is so disastrous that buying tickets to the Titanic exhibition seemed appropriate. We bought three Titanic tickets, which, it turned out, was one more than we actually needed. Come on, it'll be fun. It's too soon! <laughs> Within minutes of the purchase, we tried contacting Ticketek by telephone, on Facebook and on Twitter. And at the same time, we asked Ticketek's PR people some questions, including one that's even more haunting than the sinking of the Titanic. Why does Ticketek charge customers for printing tickets at home? On Facebook, it took Ticketek 40 minutes to refuse a refund. I guess prompt lack of customer service is better than nothing, or at least it's nothing but quicker. But let's be clear, no refunds or exchanges for change of mind, that is perfectly legal. On Twitter, it took 20 minutes for Ticketek to give our refund request another polite FU. But it was a very different story when we tried to call Ticketek on, and don't bother writing this number down, when you call, the robot lady says, Welcome to Ticketek. We're experiencing a high call volume at this time. Then, over about 30 seconds, she tries to shunt you off to Ticketek.com.au But, stay on the line and eventually If you feel you would still like to speak with the consultant Finally, yes, put me onto a human being. Please try again later. Thank you for calling Ticketek. That's what happened when we called Ticketek at 11.06am, at midday, and in fact each of the five times we called that day, and every one of the 12 times we called the next day. So when Ticketek says... A high call volume. I think I know what they mean. Welcome to Ticketek. I've been trying to get through for two days! Here's what happened when we called Ticketek at 2.15am. Thank you for taking the time to hold. We are experiencing a wait time of greater than one hour. We will be ending your call at this time. I've actually started to wonder if Ticketek's call centre reps are really that dedicated or much of a team. Welcome to Ticketek. And in my more cynical moments, I've even wondered if Ticketek's recorded messages might be misleading or deceptive. We can definitely say that their PR people got back to us quicker than we could get through to Ticketek by phone. Now, they didn't actually answer most of our questions, but they did say... Ticketek acts as the agent of venues and promoters. Ticketek does not decide if refunds are approved. And Ticketek is an agent. So the call on refunds for things like a change to a UFC title fight may not be theirs. The voluntary Live Performance Australia ticketing code of practice says refunds aren't required for a change in a support act or festival lineups, which suggests there should be a refund if the headliner changes. And by the way, UFC did offer refunds after the grim Reaper news. But Ticketek isn't just an agent. They provide ticketing services and the consumer law guarantees apply to those services. So Ticketek is responsible for ticketing failures. Not customer errors, but errors in their system. And we think statements like this or this, if they don't properly acknowledge your consumer law rights, can be misleading. By the way, while we were trying to call Ticketek, they actually called us six hours after the tweet offering to refund one ticket because it was a same-day request. So, when it comes to Ticketek, 
Social media looks like the best way to get in touch. And for major failures of consumer guarantees, a refund is not their call. It's yours. But I wouldn't bother calling about it. Plus, you can get a refund on a Titanic ticket. Now that was a major failure. And finally tonight, it's Warren. When shopping in Fitzroy at Ishka, seller of an eclectic range of world crafts, Warren was expecting to get a discount on his purchase of a classic world craft from the foothills of the Himalayan mountains, the USB salt lamp. Even though Ishka's a not not for profit organisation, Warren expected them to give him the 50% off absolutely everything promised on the sign in their window. But when he went to pay, Ishka said Warren could only get the discount if he signed up to their Karma Club, bringing a world of rewards to you. Though looking at the terms of Karma Club membership, it's more like a world of rewards in the absolute discretion of Ishka. Maybe the rewards are guaranteed in another life. But in this life, Warren wasn't happy. Your three metre high sign says no exceptions. This is pure data trawling. Whoa, as you can tell, Warren felt misled by Ishka's sign. But a three metre high sign, Warren? Really? We checked out Ishka's signage using Google Earth and... <laughs> yeah, that is a big sign. And it does say... 50% off store-wide! For what it's worth, Ishka says their staff are told to give the discount to customers who don't want to join the Karma Club. Warren says he wasn't given that option. At the same time, it's not illegal to make discounts conditional in some way. Most discounts are. But it is against the consumer law to be misleading about prices. And businesses can't just rely on fine print. Now, Ishka says that the Karma Club condition is displayed prominently in store. Warren disagrees. So which argument's more convincing? Well, here's our assessment. To scale. In the end, for Warren, the lure of 50% off his rock salt USB lamp was too great. He signed up, though he's not certain that his enrolment form for the Karma Club was completely accurate, which is a bit cheeky. So overall, it is a bit hard to say how the consumer law karma will pan out in this case. Until next life, good night. <laughs>